Welcome to Acumentus Acumen, the property podcast that delivers expert insights and answers to your burning industry questions. Join our property valuers monthly as they distill their wisdom into each episode. It's your compass in the ever-evolving real estate world. We have a stellar episode ready for you. Let's dive in. Welcome back to Acumentus Acumen. I'm your host, Sarah Harding, State Director Residential here in New South Wales. Thanks for listening in. We're getting into the pointy end of the year where everything seems to speed up before settling down over the Christmas break. Now, I think it's safe to say that most homeowners seem to associate the Christmas downtime as the perfect time to get all of those DIY jobs or bigger home renovations done. I know I certainly am. Whether you're prepping your house for sale now or in the future, or just want a refresh, we are here to answer the burning question of, will this reno actually add value to my home? or is it just going to cause me unnecessary stress? Today, I'm joined by Annette Smith, State Director for Regional Operations North, Nick Fennell, National Director at Asset Advisory, and Sarah Banner, State Director for Residential Operations for Queensland. Now, Nick, I might start with you, as I know you love a good DIY project. So what does a valuer like yourself keep in mind when they undertake a renovation? Uh, thank you, Sarah. Yes, I'm a closet DIYer. Um, thank you. Good question. Uh, it really depends, I guess. It's, it's really important to understand the uh, market and where you are living or where the property is located that you're looking to renovate. Uh, it makes no sense to uh, build a million dollar mansion in an area surrounded by uh, $300,000 houses, for example, and equally, uh, you wouldn't put in a uh, a budget kitchen into a two-rack mansion. That's for the Melburnians who understand where two-rack is. Um, really understanding your market, what, what the expectations are from the uh, potential purchasers or those who will create value in your property moving forward. Um, things like uh, the design, the materials, the function, the flow, the overall impact to the um, property itself need to be taken into consideration. Um, and and things like polarizing aspects, i.e. bright pink kitchens or uh, your choice of materials in the bathroom floor, for example, you you may end up spending money where uh, the market won't reflect that in terms of value. So uh, really understanding your market, really understanding uh, what it is that you're doing to the property and how it's going to impact uh, the overall property value moving forward. Thanks for that, Nick. So my passion for buying expensive succulents at the Manly Markets at the weekend really isn't going to add value to my home. Uh, Good question. Uh, There are some lovely succulents out there that uh, uh, would appeal to many of uh, buyers in the market, but it it really depends. Um, And like anything, you can overcapitalize on uh, landscaping and, and costs might not equal value. But yeah, you might be in it for more than um, adding value. We're, we're talking about adding value here through renovations today, but uh, for some, they might prioritise feel and comfort and overall ambience above um, the value to someone else down the track. So uh, maybe if you love succulents that much and you've built a succulent garden, you'll get what you want from your property. No, good advice. Thanks, Nick. Sarah, I might move to you next. I know you're married to a carpenter, so renovations would be something that you undertake on a weekly basis, like the recent fencing project that you worked on. So I am curious, does proper fencing add value to a property? Sarah, we're we're still going on the fencing project. Maybe ask me again in another 12 months and I'll report report back the progress. Um, there's an old saying, um, if you're married to a tradie, your house is never done. And, you know, I, I can attest to that one. Um, but logically, there are things that add value, right? So things like your driveways add value, your landscaping adds value. Um, to give the people a Brisbane reference, you're not going to put uh, travertine tiles uh, driveway in your house at Goodnow. Equally, you're not going to put a basic exposed ag driveway in your multi-million dollar mansion on Hamilton Hill. So, I mean, fencing fencing certainly does add value, but it's not always the case that that added value of works will equate to the cost of the project. Uh, So that, I mean, that doesn't just go for fencing, but really any capital improvements on your property. 
So what you're saying there is the quality of the Renault is important, but not necessarily the highest cost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, wonderful. And actually, I have got another question about adding value to a property. And I wonder if you're getting any inquiries about the value of electric vehicle charging points. Do you think that this is adding value? Yeah, electric electric vehicle charging points are becoming more common to the market. What we're seeing in, in the high-rise buildings at the moment in the major cities is that's becoming the norm for, for developers to be putting the facility for those in their um, car accommodation levels. Uh, but certainly I think that that's a space that is only predicted to grow. I know, you know, your, your batteries for your for your solar panels are still really at an unachievable cost for the wider market. I think I think Mr. Elon Musk is still selling his Tesla batteries for about 20K, which, you know, is, is big money. So, you know, until we can get some more players in the market in that space, um, I think that's going to be that barrier to to just the the mum and dad to, you know, put one in their, in their new build. Wonderful. No, thanks for that insight, Sarah. Annette. Over to you, the builder of a husband. I think um, I should have married a tradie. I married a, an accountant instead, although he does like his DIY. But renovations, obviously, for you are part and parcel of your daily lives too. And I hear that you've got a beautiful train carriage converted to a guest room in your backyard. Was that a strategic move to add value to the property or just a beautiful gift to you by your husband? Well, it ended up being a beautiful gift, but at the start, when he asked me what I wanted for my birthday one year, I said, I want a train carriage done up. And his first reaction was, where do I find one of those from? It is a new, unique asset and looks great in our backyard. I'm just having a laugh at Sarah, though, about um, builders' wives never having their house finished. We've been in our house 12 years. It took me five years to get back door handles. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not a myth. That one's a fact. All in good time. Very good. And so talking about myths, can you um, share with us and with the listeners, what are some of the myths that you come across on a daily basis that people think would increase the value of the property when you're out on the ground? Okay, so I'm in central Queensland. The main one is swimming pools. So it's very hot up here. Uh, most of the market appreciates a swimming pool, but you never get back the money that you put in for it. Uh, because retirees and people without children up here don't see the same value. So pools is the biggest one that we see where they spend. 80 to $100,000, but they don't get the same value back. The second myth would be when you see houses with m lots of bedrooms under a small roof area. People think that the more bedrooms in a house, the more value it is. But it's not actually that. The market will look at how big the house is in comparison to living areas and outdoor areas. So that would be the second one. The third myth would be around uh, cost equaling value. And Sarah's talked about driveways. Nick's given his examples of the kitchens, you know, uh, producing a product that fits within your market and understanding that something that appeals to you will not appeal to the wider market. So it's that cost thing that, you know, no matter what I spend, if I replace a good kitchen with a very expensive kitchen, I'm not going to get the money back for it. And people just assume that if they keep adding to a property, they will keep getting value for it. Uh, just going to touch on something though that Sarah said about the Tesla car station. So whilst, you know, it's each market reacts differently. So if someone was to put that into their home out in Emerald, it would not add value for the simple fact that the closest regional centres are either three or four hours away, so the Tesla cars won't actually travel that far. So we're a long way off in our market having something like that achievable. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting point. process. And where yeah. I am in the northern beaches of Sydney, you can't get into one of the electric vehicle spaces because everyone seems to be driving around with a Tesla or an electric vehicle equivalent like myself. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, but no, that's great feedback, Annette, thank you. And I'm secretly very jealous of the train carriage. Um, so we've got some great insights from our three experts here today. Uh, for me, I think the key takeaways are, if you're going to invest money in your, in your renovations, whether it's for personal or whether it's to sell, you need to make sure that what you are spending on fits within the house and with the area. Uh, for residential properties, it's always very easy to let emotion take over. And sometimes we do make choices with our heart rather than our head. But as Nick said, always go with a quality builder. As Sarah said, it's not necessarily the most expensive um, suppliers or the quality. So quality is important, but it's not necessarily the most important. Um, and with Annette, 
listen out for those myths. It's not necessarily the pool that is going to get you the highest price in the area. Thank you very much, everyone, for those insights. And thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time on the next edition of Acumentis Acumen, we'll have some burning questions. Another episode, another great property industry insight. Tune into next month's podcast for another topical discussion. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next Acumentis Acumen. See you in the next one. Bye for now.